All right, so now we're going to introduce uh, the notion of the Taylor series method for uh, approximating the solutions uh, of um, <coughs> a differential equation. Um, and if you will, it's like the, the whole point is to, in essence, weaponize it's like the, uh, the Taylor theorem, it's like in order to construct numerical approximations. So the general idea uh, in, in most um, approaches to discretizing uh, the solution of an initial value problem, to uh, replace some sort of approximate relationship which the exact solution satisfies example, um, um, if you were to again take the Taylor expansion, right, that uh, y at tk plus 1, right, is approximately equal to y at tk, it's like plus, um, you know, it's h times f prime at tk, right, it's approximate because of course there's a, um, <coughs> there's sort of an additional um, uh, Taylor remainder term, which is of uh, order h squared, right, um, with an exact relationship between uh, the approximate values. So, so now it's like, so these uh, y at tk plus 1 and y tk are obviously the exact solution. Uh, and then we have uh, the numerical approximation, which is denoted yk plus 1, right, yk. So I'm going to actually, instead of having an approximation, I have an equality, and now I have an exact relationship here uh, between tk um, and, let's see, yk. So let me just be a little bit more explicit here and say <coughs> tk y at tk. And then here it's like uh, instead of y tk, it's like I have yk there. All right, so, so that's sort of the idea. It's like and this is sort of uh, one way to think about, say, the Euler method, which we talked about before, right? The Euler method is taking this relationship, which is obtained by essentially truncating the Taylor uh, theorem, it's like by ignoring this order h squared term, right? So that's an approximate relationship here. And thinking of that approximate relationship of the exact solution, right, as an exact relationship between the approximate um, approximation of the solution, okay? So uh, Euler's method then, for example, right, is, was derived by dropping the uh, sort of big O of h squared terms, right, in the Taylor series, in the Taylor <coughs> series expansion. And then uh, the point is that one can derive higher order methods uh, than just the Euler method, which is a first order accurate method, uh, by retaining more terms in the Taylor expansion. So one can derive higher order methods by retaining more terms. Taylor expansion. Okay, all right. 
So, so let's see how to, to go about doing this. <coughs> uh, and, and sort of some of the subtleties it's like which arise it's like when you do this. Okay. All right. Um. <coughs> So let's try to illustrate this by just taking one additional term. It's like in the Taylor expansion. Okay. So you have y at tk plus 1 is equal to y at tk plus h times uh, y prime. Okay. At tk plus h squared over 2 y double prime at tk. Right. Plus something which is big O of h cubed. All right, so that's of course just the usual Taylor expansion. And of course, y satisfies the differential equation. y prime is equal to f of ty, right? So that's what we did. It's like in the first instance with uh, the Euler method is that we use the condition it's like which uh, the solution satisfies, right? To replace this y prime, it's like with f of ty. Okay, so we know that this is equal to y of tk plus h f at tk y at tk. And then you have this h squared over 2 y double prime tk plus big O of h cubed. All right, so now it's like you have a slight problem, right? Because you don't have an explicit expression for y, so I can't just differentiate it twice, right? The only information I have about y comes from the differential equation itself. So the question here is how to compute y double prime and actually sort of the higher derivatives as well, right? Okay, so, um, so the only information again you have about y <coughs> comes from well, the two pieces of information you have. You have the differential equation, which it satisfies, uh, and you have the initial data, right? So, but you want to compute y double prime. So what you have to do is that you have to take y prime is equal to f of ty, and then you have to implicitly differentiate this, okay? So, uh, so this gets a little bit complicated because you want to take the total time derivative uh, and act it on both sides so that, you know, because if you hit y prime with uh, ddt, then you get y double prime, okay? But ddt uh, is, um, you know, you can express in terms of partial derivatives in the following way, right? So it's the partial derivative with respect to time. Um, and it has to do with the fact that you're acting on f, which depends on t and y, right? So you have to differentiate with respect to y as well here, okay? And then you have a term which has a d dy, but um, by its, uh, <coughs> essentially by the chain rule, it's like you have to uh, also include a term which is uh, y prime, right? Um, you have to, you have to do a <coughs> uh, dy dt term, okay? And then again, you have to use the fact that dy dt is f. So this uh, total time derivative operator looks like a partial respect to time plus f ty d dy, okay? So that's, that's what it looks like. Okay, so now we're in a position to apply it to this differential equation. So d dt of y prime is of course y double prime, which is the thing I'm trying to compute here in order to get the next high order term in the Taylor series. And this is this uh, total time derivative operator, but expanded, <coughs> okay? And here I'm going to suppress the dependence, it's like on t and y <coughs> of f, so I'm just gonna write it like this, and then this is applied to f, okay? So, so this is uh, f sub t, okay, so the subscript here is going to denote, uh, denote a partial derivative, okay, so f sub t plus f uh, f y, right, so, um, so I have f d d y applied to f, it's like this gives me f times f y, okay, so that's the, the, the next term, okay. Um, and so now it's like I can write down, it's like a higher order Taylor method, right? So I can have, again, y of tk plus 1 is equal to y of tk plus hf 
uh, tk y at tk, right, plus h squared over 2 df dt plus uh, f df dy at the point tk y tk uh, plus something which is big O of h cubed now. Okay, so I can drop the uh, sort of big O h cubed term and I can replace it. It's like any time I see a y of tk with y uh, k and every time I see a y tk plus 1 with y k plus 1. Uh, and I get a method which looks like this. So y k plus 1 is equal to y k plus h f at t k y k plus h squared over 2, right, d f dt plus f df dy at tk yk. So this thing here is what is called the second order Taylor method. So, uh, so there's some sort of immediate observations uh, to take in mind, one of which is obviously that um, unlike the Euler method where, you know, it's like the only thing you needed um, was the kind of things which you would need to s even frame the initial value problem, which is to say that I needed the right-hand side of the differential equation and I needed the initial data, right? Um, with the Taylor series method, you have to do some additional legwork in order to implement this. So in particular, you have to compute these partial derivatives, it's like of f with respect to time and to uh, position, right? And then you have to, in order to compute this um, next, this second order sort of term, it's like in the, uh, the, uh, in the method, okay? So, um, so the disadvantage, if you will, it's like of Taylor series methods uh, beyond first order, right, is, is exactly this legwork which uh, is necessary, um, you know, it's like in order to pre-process the vector field in some sense, okay. Um, and, you know, it's like, so this becomes particularly problematic, it's like when you are trying to apply this to a variety of um, um, <coughs> sort of um, differential equations and not just one, right? Uh, and so in practice, uh, Taylor methods are not very commonly used as a general purpose tool. Um, so you might ask why did we introduce them? And the reason why we introduced them is that even though they may not often be used, uh, they're not often used, it's like uh, for general purpose uh, numerical integration, they're very useful in terms of doing the error analysis by comparing you know, it's like the Taylor method of an appropriate order with um, some other numerical method, you can then establish something about the order of accuracy of the method. So, so they're, again, an important theoretical tool for error analysis, right? And, and maybe let me just sort of say um, <coughs> what happens, right? So, so Taylor methods sort of require sort of pre-processing by sort of computing sort of these partial derivatives, right? And actually they'll involve higher derivatives in general. Um, so they are not often used as general purpose methods. Okay, but, uh, but they are used in error analysis. Um, <coughs> basically in order to determine the uh, order of accuracy of other methods. OK. 
Okay. <clears throat> so in order to compute the order accuracy of another method, it's oftentimes the case that you compare the um, sort of the numerical method, it's like what you're trying to analyze, it's like to the corresponding uh, Taylor method uh, of the same order. It's like, and then uh, by checking that certain terms match, it's like uh, you're able to conclude that your, um, the method you're trying to analyze has the appropriate order of accuracy. Okay. All right. Um, so, so as I said, it's these are not popular as general purpose methods. This is not to say they're not used. Um, so they tend to be used. It's like you know, it's like in applications where um, there's a huge interest in getting extremely accurate solutions of a very specific problem, right? So in particular, for example, um, when people uh, do things like uh, compute the n-body solution, it's like um, you know, say to analyze the stability, it's like of the solar system and stuff along those lines. Um, <clears throat> then you do have people who invest substantial amounts of time and effort, you know, in computing very efficiently these extremely high order derivatives of a particular vector field um, <clears throat> in order to construct, um, you know, good high order methods like for these systems. But as I said, it's like unless you, um, you have a huge investment in a very particular class of problems, um, you know, well, actually not just a particular class of problems, but a very specific uh, differential equation. Otherwise, it's like it's oftentimes not practical to, to use these Taylor methods uh, except as a analysis tool. It's like uh, in trying to determine the order of accuracy of other methods. Okay, um, so let me just stop here for, for now and second. Then uh, what we'll do is that we'll, we'll look at some examples of, of these methods in a little bit.